What video games have I uh, like for someone who doesn't play games? It's a, it's, a, it's a 2019 video. A lot of views, I guess. Because again, it's, a, it's a, like an interesting topic, right? Because again, I'm a, I'm 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 what you might call as a call a gamer, right? So let's see what's up. Last year, the lady I live with, also known as my wife asked if she could try mm -hmm. out one of the games I've been playing. She described it as the one with the cute little ghost guy, and after scrolling through my entire library, I realized guy. she was talking about Hollow Knight. Given the ah. fact that her experience with video games at that point consisted of the occasional race in Mario Kart and a smattering of crash. I think generally, like a lot of people, like your experience with video games, like when you're not a person who grew up with like a lot of games and played a lot of games in general, are just fucking Mario Kart and. Like small little games that you like, maybe you played on a, on a Wii or something that your brother or like your sister had or something again. Because a lot of people don't, again, for me, like it's kind of in, inconceivable that people actually don't play video games. Like, I don't have a lot of friends that never play video games, and I'm always just thinking, like, what the fuck do they do in their daily life if not playing video games, right? So it's. It's in, in, it's an interesting topic. This shit. Levels from when she was a kid, I knew with fair confidence that her playing Hollow Knight would go terribly. So obviously, I booted it up and set her into the world. Goddamn. Of Hollow Nest. As she played, every moment, regardless of how seemingly insignificant, had a strange sort of intensity to it. For example, in the tutorial, there are a set of platforms that the player needs to jump across. The only penalty for falling is a little bit of time, and on my first playthrough, I breezed past it and immediately forgot about it. Well, yeah, obviously, because these things are like, um, what do you call it? Like, they are obvious to you as a gamer, but they aren't obvious to someone who doesn't play games, I guess. About it. For her, it was intense beyond belief. She wasn't sure what the penalty for falling would be, and she didn't have a full grasp on how to adjust her jump height and distance. Each success. Oh yeah, obviously, because like you don't know how hot, uh, like how much you should press down the like the jump button and stuff. Like, again, I don't know if you're playing on Switch or PC or whatever you're playing on. Full jump felt like a triumph, and after landing, she'd look out at the next platform, searching for the nerve to jump again. Watching her work through this early section and seeing the different ways that she viewed the game got me thinking a lot about the language of video games and just how yeah. much a person's level of video game literacy affects their experience. I'm pretty sure there's a hidden place right here. Like again, I've, I've played Hall Knight. I'm pretty sure there's a hidden place if you hit it right there. With any given title. I can't really think of a time in my life where I wasn't interested in games. And yeah, me neither. That, there are certain I always had an interest in, interest in games. Like, I used to play Nint Game Boy, Nintendo, PC, PlayStation 1 and 2, Wii, everything, all the fucking time. Like, that was what I mainly, like, fucking did for most of my fucking life. Like, I, would, I just played video games. Like, when after school, I played video games, came home, came, like, before I go to school, play video games. When I'm in school, take my Nintendo or Game Boy to the fucking, like, uh, school to play video games. There was nothing I didn't do but play fucking video games. Because, again, friends? What did you do with friends? You play video games with your friends, right? Uh, what do you do when you have a lot of friends? Friends, you go to some of those house. All, all, all your boys come, come together with their PCs, and then you go to one of their houses, buy a bunch of energy drinks, which, again, we shouldn't drink when you are, you're under 18. But, again, fuck it, we live in a society. Um... And you just drink energy drinks to keep yourself, all your boys at fucking alive for in like two days straight and just keep playing video games. Friends don't have friends. Friends have friends. Man, most of my friends have friends that I don't know. So, you know. Aspects about them that are almost what up, man? Get some mango to blow up. And that's Actually, because a lot of nobody. games use the same ideas and vocabulary in order to get information across to players as quickly as possible. Well, yeah, it's why the color red is almost always associated with health. Why yeah. the A button health and explodey things or its equivalent is typically the command to jump, and why platformers yeah. more often than not have players moving from left to right. At this point, I yeah, that's actually true. Most games like the old Mario, 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 Mario games, like the original original ones it was always from left to right because again that's just how it always has been it, it's weird when you do when you go from right to left in any kind of games because you're not used to doing that on this is like it's a little secret or something you can Setting find games where after five minutes of trying a new one i almost always know what to expect no yeah. matter the kind of obviously game. but that a shooting game will always be a shooting game you will always know that r is reload you'll probably be shoot some fucking fl you'll just you know be a uh, There'll be grenades, flashbangs, they always work kind of the same. Like, you know what, whenever you start a boot up a shooting game, you kind of already know what the fuck you're gonna do in the game. Like, there isn't something that's gonna surprise you or anything in the game, because you are, in some weird way, every single shooting game kind of acts the same in a way, so you always know what the fuck to do. 
nothing surprises you besides that like the differences between this the like this, the differences in like what what's on the screen but the mechanics are generally the same inherent understanding of how games work and what to expect from them doesn't exist for the lady i live with because she hasn't spent the time learning those things obviously and this made me want i have had uh, ex girlfriends that like i took over to my house where we like we play playstation or something like two player games where she just sucked fucking dick at the games because again most of these games were fighting games, shooting games, or puzzle games. While games like Tetris was easy for them, they kind of usually beat me in Tetris. Um, but games where like you kind of need to have like some kind of like background memory of the games, they sucked at because they didn't have that background memory, which I did. So it was just, it was just interesting to see. How do people learn the basics of video games? So I decided to run an informal experiment where I'd have her play a handful of titles and see how she approached figuring each one of them out in the hopes Ooh, of getting time? a better understanding of how people learn the language. Uh, of video games. I think that's in an Spider effort Man? to not think... influence how she approached any given title. I didn't give her any how do I win the game? instructions. I just watched silently judging. I had her play through the early sections of nine games: mm -hmm. Super Mario Brothers, Shovel yeah, Knight, yeah. Celeste, Portal, Doom, Skyrim, The Last of Us, Uncharted 2, and so that I could really test the strength of our marriage dark souls oh. i picked these titles because a i felt they would i think some uh, most of them are linear games in some sen some sense so that shouldn't be an issue it, i think it would be more of an issue if she like played minecraft or like games where you kind of have to figure out the the ending or like the result or some some kind of like that on your own especially in minecraft because there is no chronological ending in minecraft there, there, there is no time where the game just ends you just keep playing the game well, again, if you kill the end dragon, that's that's the end, right? But actually, the end is when you stop playing that playing on that on that world and that server and even the game, maybe. Be a solid sampling of three major types of games, those being 2D platformers, 3D platformers, and first-person shooters slash adventures, while also offering a diverse spread of genres and gameplay mechanics. And B, I like them. So this is how it went. Just kidding. We're well, why my wife left me? <laughs> With each game, I noticed that there were a vast amount of seemingly basic functions and mechanics that she either didn't fully grasp or know existed. This first came up with Mario 1-1. She figured out the jump easily enough, but never realized yeah. she had the ability to dash, making her time with the level painfully hard to watch. There are no in-game instructions on how to dash or do anything else, really. So yeah. players will only learn about it if they read the instruction manual, figure it out through experience, or does that. have another person tell them how it works. As she didn't even know it was something she could do, she never figured it out. For me, it has become second nature to try to sprint in games. Yeah, obviously. I know it's an option. I just assume it will be and guess the command will probably be the B button or its equivalent. Or a shift, but I yeah. only make that assumption because of years of being conditioned to make it. Yeah. Figuring out the controls for all of the games, whether they were explicitly explained or implicitly taught through levels. Again, it's, it's so interesting, again, like, because the fact that he had to, again, wonder why she doesn't understand something and then go in the background kind of like, oh yeah, that's because I played blah, 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 and I did blah, 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 and that's why I know that blah, 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 right? So it's, it's actually kind of was cool. a challenge Dude. for her. Part of this stems from her not being all that comfortable with the controller. Also Anytime that. Anytime a game asked for her to press a certain button, she'd look down at the controller and search for it. Yeah, when it's, it, again, it's also the, um, when, when, like, games want me to press something else and, like, double the ASDF, uh, and, like, set XN, and, like, they want me to click maybe J or something, like, how the fuck? Like, I kind of like, wait, J? Because that's one of those buttons that I don't click a lot, so it's kind of like, ah. Uh, I can know sometimes I need to look at that. Oh, there, that, one, that button. Okay. Uh, I don't instantly do that, mainly because Minecraft. Yeah, true. True. The most memorable you just start shifting. instances of this. But in general, if you played, let's say, Doom or any game like that, you kind of like always just try to like press shift. Because again, it's in, ma in most games, it's like shift right came up while playing the last of us early on there's a prompt on the screen to press l3 which she couldn't find on the controller the as early there was no e. button labeled l3 she noticed it was shaped like a circle so she guessed it might be one of the joysticks however she didn't know that it meant to press down uh... on it so she just sort of moved back and forth until eventually figuring it out i've certainly played games that do a better job of illustrating how l3 and r3 definitely work, but it is but again i think older games were bad at like showing what you had to do again what we just saw in like the last of us one um they didn't exactly like they don't do like what nintendo does where it's kind of like a thing on again remember the wii 
like the Wii would always show Wii Remote and then show the button you had to click on like, or you had to do this. And a lot of games these days, also on PlayStation, where it shows the controller, like joystick going around. Like it is way better now of showing what you need to do than back in the days where it's just kind of like, uh, it doesn't really show what the fuck I need to do, motherfucker. Um, and yeah. It's kind of kind of interesting. There's pretty much a I'll make food. Hey, go get that food, boy. That new players will have no reason to know exists. Figuring out a game's controls sounds easy, but she essentially not only had to memorize which buttons did what, but also which buttons were where, adding another layer of things to keep track of and making the process a little bit more overwhelming. She typically fared better with games that didn't give too much information to remember. With Dark Souls, mm -hmm. after reading 15 or so messages explaining the controls, she said she felt like she was getting too much information too quickly. A lot of the things she learned, most notably the lock-on feature, she forgot about by the time they would actually be useful. On the other side of yeah. things, with Shovel Knight, she struggled to get But I will also say, like, maybe Dark Souls, again, it's it's a hard game. It's a game that, do, like, doesn't... Um, it, it favors the people that kind of, like, are experienced with games like Dark Souls and has some, some kind of, like... Um, equivalent in real in the real world of like this is what you need to do um they don't really expect you to be a complete newbie when playing a dark souls games they don't expect that so in general like they're kind of like okay did it yeah yeah i know i know i know because usually in tutorials i'm kind of like all right okay that button yeah sure sure sure, sure. i just go out there and then i just like fucking start smacking ass because in usually in most games it's just the same as i always a few of the early sections because she didn't understand the full scope of her abilities or how to use them but once she did start to figure things out through experimentation she ended up remembering the core mechanics better because she witnessed firsthand how useful they could be so for her at least giving a memorable use of a mechanic made it stick in her mind a lot clearer yeah. most of the games i had her play were with a controller but i did want her to have some experience with mouse and keyboard so i yeah. had her try a few games with a first person perspective definitely doom yeah, yeah doom to start as it doesn't oh. call for quick reflexes and it gives players time to figure things it's out. also a fun game if they played it together as well like i think that game could have been fun if they played it together but i guess again it is to test her out using the keyboard actually proved to be easier for her than the controller as really she uses the keyboard every day and no that is it true? Though I would still expect the control to be easier because each controls are in general they have a lot less button buttons and yeah, I, th I just think they would be easier no matter what. Is. However, if you've been paying attention to the footage, you probably noticed that she isn't looking around at all. And that's because she didn't realize she was supposed to use the mouse. Ah, uh, shit. <laughs> In fairness, the instructions at the start explain how to move and how to pick things up. But they yeah, but they they expect you to know that the mouse moves you to the right and left. Like they expect you to know that. Like assume that players will just know to use the mouse to look around. Obviously, given that she doesn't spend her free time watching me play games on my computer. Why would she? I know that a lot of these little issues she ran into in regards to controls and mechanics all seem easy to overcome, and in a lot of ways they are, but they do Definitely. still act as small barriers to entry for new players. Even oh yeah, obviously. There's always barriers to entry in every single kind of game, but the, the issue is that some barriers to entry are experience. Me being exper like I didn't need to have experience with other Dark Souls games to be good at Elden Ring. Let's for example, right? I just knew that ba 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 ba. Yeah, I can I can do this. Ba ba ba, and that's that's just like common knowledge shit. And then I beat the game, right? Like no issues, right? I think in general it's just like you just need to know as a certain a few um a certain things, and then you can like play the game. But. Barriers to entry of like not knowing the mouse moves you to the right and left. Like, I think it's barely even a barrier to entry. It's kind of like a fucking pebble, and you're driving a monster truck, pretty much. Like, let's just when be games honest. Have detailed explanations for things. It can sometimes be information overload, and it isn't uncommon for people to skip over explanations accidentally or on purpose because they don't feel like reading a bunch of stuff when they just yeah. Always, I do that. And do a lot I did of that. titles seem to assume that players will have at least some familiarity with controls. So some of them. Well, yeah, obviously, because like if you don't know anything about games then why the fuck would you start off with a fucking skyrim or why the fuck would you start off with a doom because then what how, what do you know doom from you should probably start playing playing a game that's maybe like more mainstream like i don't know fucking the mario games like mario 3d or something i think that would be probably be a be a mario 64 mario 64 i'm sorry um that would probably be a better game game to entry than fucking i don't know like counter-strike go or something
the more simple explanation. Even actually, maybe it comes would be pretty and good as a starter game. Most people end up learning these basic things that they won't figure out without searching on their what own. Call of Duty? Is through other people. For example, back to Mario. I don't remember how I learned to sprint in the game, but as I know, I would not have read the instruction manual. There's a pretty decent chance that my brother told me how to do it, and I wouldn't be surprised if one of his. I think I just pressed the buttons and it just happened because my brother didn't did, doesn't really play video games. Um, he never really played a lot of games in general. Uh, when he got a Game Boy as a kid, he started crying because he, he did he didn't want a Game Boy. He wanted something else. He thought it was a bad gift. But I was really interested in the Game Boy, so later I got my own Game Boy. I think it's because I liked it that my brother then started also liking it. His friends had told him, and so on and so on. Also, the only reason I understand half the things I do in Dark Souls is because I've scoured wikis and message boards on how to get good. Video games are best when they are a communal experience. Oh, 100%, 100%. And a big part of that stems from the sharing of knowledge. Obviously, someone being a backseat gamer can get annoying if they explain how to do everything, but getting assistance when it's needed most can make a game far more enjoyable. Definitely. It bridges the gap between a game's experience. Oh, isn't that the uh, the CEO right now of a Nintendo, I'm pretty sure, in America? Back players to I already think. know and what they actually do know. Most of the frustration that the lady I live with had while playing boiled down to not being able to figure things out that she didn't know existed, which is something that would have been solved had I not just been a silent observer. Oh yeah, one of them. was though, she found herself continuing to have problems, and one of those is summed up best by her most frequently asked question. Where the fuck am I going? That's when actually it came true. To the 2D platformers, navigating wasn't especially difficult for her. Because yeah. the options were limited, it was pretty easy for her to figure out that she needed to go right and sometimes up. Celeste and Shovel Knight do have a few optional rooms players can go in, but for the most part, whenever she entered one, she could tell it wasn't the path she wanted to take. Although Shovel Knight does have a side room in the tutorial that heads to the right and seems like the main path despite not being it, and there was a fair amount of disappointment as she realized she did all that work for nothing. Yeah. Are you fucking kidding me? <laughs> However, for all the 3D games, navigating proved far more difficult. She spent a lot of time wrestling with the camera in third person games, and she wasn't all that great at moving and looking around at the same time in first person ones. Due to her not rotating the camera around a ton, she didn't always get a great sense of her surroundings, so she struggled with figuring out where she was and where she was going. Like in Skyrim, she missed the jump from the tower to the house during the tutorial, and Wait, it took a while for her to realize that she had fallen back to the spot where she started. Also, also, because she wasn't good at focusing her camera, she didn't realize she was supposed to be following Hadvar, so she was sort of just strolling along, trying to get out of the city in her the own fuck? way. The <laughs> fuck? Once she did follow him and got into a building, she was- Like, uh, honestly, like, I, I don't know. That it, that was fucking easy for me, but yeah, I, I, I guess, again, if you don't play video games, I guess that would be- Kind of hard, I guess. More interested in picking up everything she saw instead of moving forward, which actually is fair and how most. Oh, yeah, I actually did that a lot as well. <laughs> play Skyrim. Either yeah. way, she wasn't fully sure where to go. Interestingly, after we finished all the games, I brought up the footage of Skyrim and showed her the compass at the top of the screen. And she said that she hadn't noticed it while playing, as she was mostly just focused on what was directly in front yeah, of her. Yeah, I had a, I had a, actually had an ex girlfriend who, again, which we, we actually played Skyrim together um, on like the PlayStation. Um, before a certain someone, uh, you know, fucking took my Skyrim and didn't bring it fucking back to me. Fuck you, uh, Silas. Um, fuck, um, <clears throat> yeah. Um, but yeah, I, I played Skyrim with a, with a girl. And, um, she didn't notice that at all. Um, I just, I just told her, like, listen, girl, I'm not feeling too good because uh, we were out drinking uh, this day. Uh, because, again, she, she was, she was completely fine. I just told her, hey, why don't you play some Skyrim? Skyrim, yeah. And she was kind of like, what the fuck is Skyrim? And she started playing it and she did not notice that at all. Again, she's doing considerably better than his wife did, but yeah of her. The same thing happened with Doom's Compass and even the health bars of enemies and bosses in Dark Souls. Okay, she I'm not going to notice waypoints on the screen when they showed up, but she didn't know what they were for, so she often ignored them. Players are hit with a lot of information when they play games. And for ones mm -hmm. who aren't all that comfortable with the basics, a lot of that information's pushed to the side, acting as another barrier for entry. Another thing that confused her was when progression in a level wasn't entirely linear. Like with Dark Souls, Again, yeah, it's a barrier to entry, yeah, 100%, right? But I, I, I will all still fucking say that, you know, maybe 
you shouldn't play fucking Dark Souls as your first fucking game, maybe. Like, you're not a fucking video game journalist here, man. Well, she got confused when the level looped back around on itself. Like, and fucking she... full quantum TV here, motherfucker. Like, just like, er, why can't I kill the first NPC in the game? Eee. She made the assumption that she had messed up and gone the wrong way. Most of the games she had played before Dark Souls had typical progression, so finding herself back near where she started felt odd. Even the 3D games that seemed like they might be more straightforward had a few things that ended up being confusing for her. For example, in Uncharted 2, what a player can climb is indicated by being colored yellow. But yeah. that wasn't obvious to her, so she constantly tried to climb things that just looked like they could be climbed. And then she questioned why she had to take the longer, more roundabout path when there were perfectly good handholds right above yep, her. A yep. similar issue with signaling happened with The Last of Us as well. There's a part where the player has to run through a city to escape, and a gas station explodes, causing street lamps and other things to block the road ahead. My wife noticed a little gap on the sidewalk that was untouched by fire, so she kept trying to run through that to get out. Yep, but every yep. time she did, the infected came and killed her. This made her think that the issue wasn't with it being the wrong way to go, but rather with her not being fast enough. So she kept trying that same path over and over. I get that. I get that, though. That's 100% the game's, uh, g game's fault, right? Because, again, even a person like me was seeing that would probably maybe try that try the route. Like, again... I could want to be seen that being a being definitely being a barrier to entry because again the game may be telling you to go one way but again if you see if you you the player sees a way out you'll probably try to take that right the other way like you'll, you'll probably take that way right over before 100%. finally finding the right way. With game design, there's often a battle between having a level look realistic and making it easy to navigate. In this example, Naughty Dog tried to make the city feel more natural by not having every path be physically blocked off. And while more experienced players will most likely see the explosion and assume they should go a different way, yeah, the game did, falls yeah. short on helping players who don't understand what they're supposed to do. By having the signal be the explosion, but the consequence being an attack by the infected, she learned the wrong lesson. And this sort of thing ended up happening to her a fair amount throughout the process, even with things that had nothing to do with navigation. Sometimes she just interpreted the information the game was given her in the wrong way, and she found herself... Learning the wrong lesson. Shit. The idea that some games teach players how to play simply through gameplay and level design is a pretty common talking point in the video game That's community. That's true, that's true. I'm I'm a firm believer in the um, I, I think he was about to say firm that's why I said firm firm first. Um, I believe that most games I will I prefer learning by playing the game. I don't want to go through a tutorial. I don't I don't want to do that. Just put me in the game and let me learn by fucking playing the game. Let me press Q. Does something happen on Q? Does something does happen happen on Q? I'm kind of like, yeah. Something happens on Q, right? But I don't give a fuck about no goddamn tutorial. I don't care about it. Get the fuck out of my video games. But again, to somebody like his wife, who definitely could use a tutorial, is kind of more happy that there is one. So I will always say that when playing a game, always give the opportunity to have a tutorial or not have a tutorial. Give the opportunity immediately. Do you want, you know, like um, tips and like tips and help tricks on screen? Yes or no? Always do that. Well, she, uh, you're probably making a bad game. I'm a firm believer that a lot of the games do this, and watching her play reaffirmed that thought. For example, in Doom, her initial instinct was to stay as far away from enemies as possible because well, she using didn't a feel shotgun. all that comfortable with the controls of a first-person shooter. However, once she came across enemies who threw fireballs at her from a distance that did way more damage than anything she could do from that same range, she started to realize that her best bet was to get close to enemies and yep. beat the crap. That's like the entire like fucking thing about Doom is just to get close and smack the fuck out of the demons. Of them or use the shotgun. Ultimately, Doom is meant to be played this way. The glory kill system and the handful of weapons that are powerful at close range are included to push a fast-paced, action-packed fighting style. And having one of the first rooms be extremely difficult to beat without playing this way sets the expectation for the rest of the game. It took her a fair bit of banging her head against the wall to get past this room. But yeah, once yeah. she did, she was better at the core mechanics of the game than when she started. With that said, what I found even Definitely. more interesting than when she learned the right lessons of how to play a game through gameplay was when she learned the wrong ones. The first instance of this that I noticed happened while playing Mario 1-1. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of the level, there's a question mark box with a mushroom in it. She had some familiarity with the Mario franchise, so she knew that mushrooms were good to get. However, after yeah. hitting the box, she jumped into a different block, oh. causing the mushroom to change directions and go off the left side of the screen, out of reach. She didn't register that she had caused the mushroom to change directions, leading her to the assumption that mushrooms would always end up going to the left. What? When she got to another block that she suspected held the mushroom she hit it and immediately moved to the left to grab it before it went off screen and well <laughs> <laughs>
This was a far That's actually comical. That's actually comical. The ones that came up while she played Celeste and Shovel Knight. I haven't played Shovel Knight or Celeste, Celeste yet. A pretty simple stage that ends with the player learning how to dash, which is arguably the most important and useful mechanic in the game. Yeah, yeah. The lady I live with interpreted the prompt to mean that the only way to dash was by doing it at an upward angle, pretty much crippling her ability to do screens effectively until after 15 minutes or so when she accidentally dashed horizontally and realized her moveset was wider than she had thought. With Shovel Knight, early on she died- I would actually say that's supposed to just fucking bad like video game thing. They should have made um like made made like the prompt be like just you know, um, a round where one right where you could just like do any any direction you want, pretty much. That's what they should have done. That was that's just bad, mate. On her next time say. through, she jumped on the bubble in the bag at the same time and assumed that both things had damaged her, causing her to think that the bags of gold were an enemy of some sort. So when she came across them after that, she would either try to attack them or actively avoid them. As she wasn't paying terribly close attention to the HUD, she never realized what they actually did. I'm not saying that these things are the faults of the game developers, but it is interesting how easy information on screen can be misunderstood. These sort of things can happen to players of all skill levels. No, they can't. Lack of experience. I don't know, man. Like this, they, uh, this just seems very easy to me. Maybe, maybe it's just because I'm such a hardcore gamer, right? But again, this, I don't know. These things would probably not be a thing that I would even struggle with, honestly. Like, let's just be honest here. I don't think even like most gamers would probably struggle with this. It's mostly just people that aren't that familiar with it. So, I don't she know. didn't have much else to go on to don't challenge have any, like, the lessons she thought she had learned. I found the disconnect between how she thought games worked and how they actually worked to be pretty intriguing. And as I focused more on those differences, I started to notice a sort of trend with every title she played. Mm -hmm. That being... Think games would be cooler? When most people talk about what any video game is like, there's often a greater focus on the general actions players can do rather than the limitations that make it possible for the yeah, game to yeah, function. 100%, for yeah. example, Mass Effect could be described as a role-playing game where, among other things, players get the opportunity to talk to and form relationships with various characters yeah, across yeah, the yeah, universe. Definitely. People who play a lot of games will most likely go in understanding that this actually means players will be able to form relationships with a predetermined cast of characters yep. by choosing responses from a set of limited dialogue options. As it turns out, this formula makes for a really great series, but there is a gap between what a game sounds like and what it actually looks like. And Definitely. And people who don't end up playing a lot of games, but have to suffer through listening to their friends or partners talk about them, they get a warped perception about what players can do in a title because they don't understand or know the systems that games use in order to give these grand sounding experiences. Where I know to apply a sort of video game logic to any title I play, the lady I live with was always trying to apply real world logic. Like in the Doom tutorial, there's a gore nest that the player needs to destroy. A waypoint marker shows up on it, which when I first played, yeah. I knew meant I needed to go up to it and most likely hit a button prompt. When my wife played, she didn't know what the marker meant, so her initial instinct wasn't to walk right up to it. Instead, she noticed while messing around that the red barrels exploded, so she had the yeah. idea to try to push one of the barrels towards the nest to blow it up. And this is objectively more interesting than just pressing a button. 100% correct. Pushing a barrel up there is definitely also an interesting way to put it. But again, the limitation of video games pretty much make this makes this so the only way that, that you can progress is the linear fucking way. I believe that linear can be good, but non-linearity added into a video game is also fucking amazing. Like, pushing a barrel up there, that should have been a fucking achievement, man. That should have been a fucking achievement. Destroy it. But of course, it didn't work. Throughout the various games, a pretty common question she asked was, why can't I do it this way? And my response was, because? The deeper yeah, answer true. is that limitations exist in games because there are only so many potential inputs a title can have. Me I think about, like, if you had a game, let's say, like, Last of Us 1, where, like, again, we just saw her at the, um... Yeah, right here at the door, like where you could open the door and just like go walk around and walk around the city. Like how much work it would take for video game like developer to actually make all that like in-game like uh, fucking uh, coding and like terrain and stuff like that. 
it would be sick, but like Limitations again, it wouldn't make sense. Existing games because there are only so many potential inputs a title can have, yeah. meaning there are a finite number of ways a player can interact with things. If developers yep. tried to program in every possible way a player might think about interacting with something, games would just never come out. Yep. I'm used to these limitations. I actually appreciate them in a lot of instances. However, Definitely. for her, she got frustrated when the ideas she came up with didn't work. Like while scaling the train in Uncharted 2, she reached a point where she wanted to swing from a pipe and through a window. So when she realized she had to take the predetermined path that yeah. didn't take much more than pressing left, she felt disappointed because yeah, her idea was cooler. In Sky 100%, again, in a lot of cases, the cooler idea is what you are like, imagine, you could have 100% imagine a cooler idea than fucking like crawling on a goddamn pipe. The cool idea is to throw, go and like jump in through the fucking window and then grab on there and started climbing in the in Skyrim the as Alduin right. began 100%. attacking the city, she found a spot in a house and figured she just waited out until he left. Yeah. But due to the scripted nature yeah. of this part of the game, that I will also I think they should have scripted it. There was a way to like n neither do like one or the other. Um, that you could, you know, just like wait for the dragon to leave, and that should have been a, been a way as well. I think that could be so cool. Plan didn't work, forcing her to follow the path the game wanted her yep. to follow. In turn, this took away all the tension of the section because she knew she could take as long as she wanted and nothing bad would happen. Hiding in a house isn't that fun of a way to play a game, but her not being able to made it feel like she lost some agency. Her expectations for what she thought she could do in each game were always different than the reality, and I think as she realized that games were more simple than she had first assumed, some. Yeah. Or the intrigue about them faded. The end of it. Shit. For the lady I live with, the thing she hated more than anything else about this experiment was having to replay sections of a level over and over again after dying. Yep. Had I not told her to keep trying on a handful of the game, she would yes, have stopped stop. far sooner. 100% like a, ga a ga person who isn't a gamer would just stop because they feel like, why would I keep doing something again and again and again and just end up by the same fucking result? Like fucking, we aren't the we aren't fucking the um, vast Montenegro here. Like um, the something about like insanity is doing the exact same thing, expecting shit to change, right? I just see. I I just think, in general, like Dark Souls has a cool replayability because the boss is is gonna kick your ass, right? But the the way like you keep going back to a boss is the fact that like, you get a bit closer, slowly, slowly, slowly. You wanna explore this massive world, but there will always be this this big fucking thing in your in your way, and you gotta come back. Become a little bit better every single time and just kick its fucking ass, right? That's that's the good thing. Sooner because it was understandably frustrating. Yeah. With that said, when she did stick with games that frustrated her and ended up beating the parts that she struggled with, she found it exhilarating. Yeah. I think this trade off of dealing with frustration so that the excitement of beating something is all that much sweeter is one that people who play a lot of games not only understand but look for. However, yeah, trying 100%. to pitch that she should spend her free time doing something that actively frustrates her so that the few moments where she succeeds feel glorious is a bit of. I don't think I, like, in Doom 2016, like, I barely even fucking died. That game was so easy on normal. Uh, like, goddamn of a tough look. This little test has me questioning how I became interested in video games in the first place. I don't remember how they became such a big part of my life. I don't know how I got to the point where I could look at a compass at the top of a screen and know what to expect from every marker. I don't think anybody can, can like, know why they have this, um hindsight of why what game like mechanics are i don't think anybody has that like that specific moment where like they just know that blah 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 does blah 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 right i don't think anybody has that it's just something that got ingrained into your mind by watching games by playing games by just experiencing things and just talking with friends right it just happens that this thing just makes sense for you Without looking them up, I don't know how I first learned about stamina bars and the various ways to make sure I don't run out of energy. I don't know how I became, I guess, fluent in the language of video games. I'm just glad that I learned the basics when I was young enough to not care about spending yeah, hours on one level. For a better understanding of how inexperienced players approach video games, I need to run a much wider and more complex study that tests in a more robust way than just sitting down to watch Portal is such video a good games game. a few cool times. Game. But I did find it interesting to compare how wildly different my approach to games is to hers. And while I definitely don't have enough definitive information to make any sort of legitimate conclusion about how inexperienced players approach games, I do want to say this. In a similar way to how it is harder mm. to learn a language as an adult, it's harder to get into video games after a lifetime of not playing. Oh yeah, definitely. And from what I that's also why, yeah, again, what the languages again, growing up with a language definitely makes it easier to, you know, speaking a language, and definitely also like growing up with Danish as in my mother tongue, 
um, it was also easier to learn English as an example, comparatively if you are, let's say, Chinese, where you don't have those like loan words and stuff like that. Again, it's definitely way harder to learn English in that, like English because of that. Um, where let's say a person of, I don't know, some other like um, Chinese kind of, kind of like a language that has some similarities, it's easy to learn that other language, which is why like it's easy for me to maybe learn, easier for me to learn German, Scandinavian, German, Scandinavian, Swedish, I mean, Swedish and Norwegian, and maybe even Icelandic, because I'm Danish, which it has a lot of similarities, which makes it easier for you to learn, which is exactly why a lot of games has a lot of similarities, which makes it easy to learn. I've seen that seems to have less to do with interest and more to do with struggling to get over the barriers that exist for new players. Like, if you don't know how to read, why would you pick up a book? Yeah, What true. I'm getting at is if someone you know who doesn't play games expresses interest in trying one, don't force them to be in an experiment where you give no guidance and yeah. mostly just watch them struggle with something that He's they pretty much just an asshole. Do. Teach them how to read it instead. So you want to pick that up, and now you have a very not annoying at all item. That I can get. Yep. That's it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, bro, have I gotten a new rock? Word in ginger troop? Uh, I don't know, man. I'll check in a second. Ooh. Put that in the video. You should just take that snippet. Don't put that in the video. I like to come here looking from. Damn. Hey, right, this video is actually bussin', dude. I fucking love this video. I guess it's just that, uh, yeah, it's just the ending, yeah. This is actually a fucking amazing video. I'm already subscribed, right? But like, goddamn, like, they don't understand why it has so many fucking views. 100%. It's an amazing video. Definitely for, um, for gamers, like, 100%. Like, this is just an amazing fucking video.